Not under my watch. That is what the now departed founder of Sledgehammer Games, one of the Call of Duty studios, had to say about what Activision Blizzard just put into Call of Duty Black Ops 4. It really is absurd, so today I'm asking you to join me. We have news to cover and a wild journey into the depths of microtransaction hell as I take you on a tour of sheer insanity. Hello everyone and welcome back to another industry report. I know, a little bit dramatic at the start, but this video is going to pull double duty as an episode of business models from the shadow realm because man, Black Ops 4 is a really worrisome title. While the game itself is quite excellent and I would never want to take away that uh, from the developers themselves of the game, the rest is a testing ground to see how far the monetization boat can be pushed. It's a full priced game with the business model of a free to play. In fact, a business model significantly worse than many free to play titles. And why are we talking about it now? Why not last week? Well, there has been a new development. The most recent update to the game, one that brought the much loved bare bones multiplayer mode into it, also introduced a new microtransaction. However, micro just does not cut it, with the cost of $30 being half that of the full game and 75% of the game's $40 battle edition that forgoes its zombies mode. This bundle gets you a hammer, a number of loot boxes, 10 levels of a battle pass skip and a loot box that has a guaranteed weapon in it that is statistically identical but does have an XP boost. The hammer was hyped up, but then players found they could only obtain it through this system. Yes, this hammer is locked behind an in-game $30 purchase. Fundamentally, I believe this is problematic with even games like Apex Legends, which is fully free, and uh, games like the Buy to Play Anthem giving players a way to earn cosmetics through gameplay. This once again has led to a wave of criticism and disappointment from fans of the franchise who understandably feel nickel and dimed to a extreme degree. It has been an absurd time for them. First, the game launched without its full microtransaction business model being implemented, meaning that launch day customers had no way of judging what they were buying into in its full scope. Microtransactions were then added into the game the following November, allowing people to advance their black market tiers, get nebulum plasma, and access to special orders on the black market. Yeah, I know, that sounds like a whole load of nothing and random word soup, but that's what they typically do. They try to obfuscate the purchase through layers of arbitrary naming, theming, and indirect acquisition. That's not all though. The following microtransaction update added in the direct purchase cosmetics store, allowing people to buy cosmetics for the game's Call of Duty point currency. A following update added the infamous $1 red dot, not a red dot site, just the dot, and then shortly after a $2 smiley face. That's not all though, their aptly named Grand Heist update further angered customers by adding in purchasable reserve crates for $2 a pop. These crates could actually contain blackout characters, so skins for the game's battle royale mode, and that is something that design director David Vonderhaar said would only be unlockable through gameplay. And the same actually does go for the specialist skins as well. Add in the most recent edition of this $30 hammer bundle and you have an ongoing story of experimentation. I mean, it is greedy, but just saying greed would conjure up the image of a blind, compulsive glutton. I think more precision is needed. Each one of these is different in design. It's a carefully planned move to push the boat out and see what they can get away with. Yes, it is greedy, but it's being done with precision, leveraging purchase information and user telemetry to learn as much about customers' purchasing habits as is possible for extreme targeting. You really do see this in Black Ops 4, which has multiple different forms of microtransaction in multiple different styles. We have the equivalent of purchasing battle pass levels. We have paid loot boxes. We have direct purchase of cosmetics. We then have large ticket price bundles and additionally the special orders, which are purchasing essentially mini battle passes as bundles. Now by comparing how all of these different things perform, Activision Blizzard will be able to hone in on the most financially efficient business model design that they can. It's all beyond the pale leading to Michael Condry, the founder of Sledgehammer Games, saying, $30 for a melee weapon? Not on my watch. 
And that really does call into question the level of control the developers had, especially in this case with Treyarch. You see, Sledgehammer Games' last outing, Call of Duty World War II, had a lot of microtransactions. However, it's fair to say that it does not come close to Black Ops 4. Now, he mentioned Advanced Warfare in his tweet, and that started off being okay, but soon had microtransactions being added to its supply drop system, even having statistically different weapon variants inside them, which very much was getting into pay-to-win territory. According to an unverifiable Reddit link, the extreme success of the Advanced Warfare supply drops put extreme pressure on Treyarch for their upcoming Black Ops 3, leading them to basically being forced to putting in a more um, effective, monetizable version of their loot boxes, because the initial version supposedly made five times less revenue than the Advanced Warf uh, Warfare ones did. Now, this is not verifiable, but it would stand to reason. Even though Michael said, not on my watch, well, even with the game that he referenced, a near paid to win loot box system eventually was forced in. So with that done, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to breathe deeply and I want you to imagine we're going on a business model safari because it's time to take you on a wild, wild ride through the world of Activision Blizzard's monetization. Number one, the game costs 60 bucks. You can purchase a version of this game without the zombies mode for 40 bucks. The season pass then costs 50 bucks. So past season passes would get you access to all the DLC packs, which would contain multiplayer maps and zombies maps. Well, with the Blops 4 live service model, they have instead been trickling the content out over time. It will have a total of 12 multiplayer maps, four zombies maps, and four blackout characters, plus a bundle of Call of Duty points. So far, four of these maps have been released, and that's a rate that has been rather slow, but has also came along with the obligatory um, Nuketown release for everyone for free, plus a number of other map variants being released for free for everyone. And the season pass, therefore, has caught a little bit of flack. It has had rather drip-fed content, and um, plus, of course, there's the game's additional monetization, which was not in place at the time that many people purchased the pass. Additionally, they have released a lot of blackout map updates, which are large enough to include full old zombie maps. Now, these have been for free, which is a good thing, but it has further eroded the value proposition of the pass after it initially was put on sale. Now, let's go in-game. And once we go in-game, things are going to take a turn for the weird. So first, let's click on the Black Market. And this takes us, of course, to the Black Market screen, which is rather packed. It has multiple tabs and is full of microtransactions. We're going to start off at the tab that it throws you into by default, which is the Contraband tab. So at the very bottom, you're going to see it highlight a number of purchases. One of them contains the Replacer. That's actually a character from the franchise's television advert, so you literally are paying to play an advertisement in game. Another is based on their St. Patrick's Day promotion, and another is a button to purchase a reserve crate. At the default rate of 100 Call of Duty points per dollar, the crates cost $2, the Luck of the Irish pack costs $20, and the Replacer costs $11. Above that, we then see the Black Market tiers. Right now, we're on Operation Grand Heist, so we're on that track. Now, you earn levels over time through gameplay, but it is at a rather slow rate. Tiers of this can be directly purchased for $1 each, there are 100 tiers for a full buyout cost of $100. Of course, the final tier has the most juicy rewards, so some people will feel pressured to sort of go for that. Additionally, there's the 0G bundle, which we see there. This costs um, $10. It gives you a tier boost, meaning it's quite desirable. Now, it is a special order, and special orders are basically miniature battle passes. They give you a number of tasks to complete once you purchase them in order to get your rewards. Next, let's hop over to Blackjack's shop. This is where you directly purchase cosmetics. It follows the Fortnite store-like model with rotating features, including outfits for eight bucks, weapon camos for three bucks, and then other things like jump packs for blackout mode that cost five bucks. And of course, the prices all vary on the rarity and quality level. You can also see a selection of special orders, including ones for character skins, and then you can see the My Deal section. If you click on that, you actually have it reveal a deal for you. In my case, it was a blue quality skin for 70 cents. Now, the My Deal section varies daily and is tailored to each user featuring cosmetic that you don't already own. Finally, we then have the reserve tab. This is the place where you can open uh, reserve crates that you have unlocked through gameplay, as well as purchase more directly. Of course, the reserve crates have a number of important things, such as a um, specialist skins, which people thought previously would only be through gameplay challenges. There's no duplicate currency, as an example, so you can just get dupes and be out of luck, which for something that you are putting real money into, I think is completely unacceptable. So there we go. We've done our journey through the black market section. But that's not it. We haven't even been to the store section. Yes, 
That wasn't even the store. The store has bundles like the Call of Duty Endowment Salute Pack. That is a pack, um, the portion of which of the revenue goes towards the Call of Duty Endowment uh, Veterans Charity. Then the Zombies Pack is sold here, or a zombie map is sold here as well. Then the Season Pass. Then there's also the Call of Duty Point Purchase Option with bundles greatly increasing in price, but also in dollar per point efficiency. But that's not all though, we've not been to the zombie section. Zombies is heavily monetized with a currency called Nebulum Plasma. Now, this Nebulum Plasma is used to purchase elixirs which are helpful during zombies matches with bundles costing 30, 45, and 75 Nebulum Plasma, but with the plasma being purchasable for COD points, with 30 plasma costing 200 points, aka $2. Now, with each new season, we get a new version of the Black Market Tier Battle Pass system, so each season of the game default adds $100 of potential new microtransactions on top of new cosmetics, new special orders, uh, just new everything. So you can see this game is fundamentally set up for maximum microtransaction density. In fact, this game has significantly more microtransactions than any game I have personally played you know, on my time on Earth, and indeed has more microtransactions than most free-to-play titles. Apex Legends has far less than this, same goes for Fortnite, and they're both free-to-play. Yet here we have a game that's fully priced with a season pass plus extremely deep monetization. Now, here's the thing. Apex Legends made $93 million in its first month, and that was before its battle pass was available for purchase. Now, sure, it had 50 million users, probably more than Blops 4, but the earnings per user is such a different story. Blops 4 sold over a billion dollars in revenue through 2018. 40% of those were fully digital, which for the Xbox and PS stores equates to um, Activision Blizzard getting a 70% cut versus the 55% cut of retail. Of course, for PC, it's on Bnet, which they own, which is a 100% cut. Now, on top of that billion, the game is far more deeply monetized than any other game in existence, from what I can tell. Maybe some of the Chinese free-to-plays are different, but um, overall, yeah, they have a far, far higher earnings per user than EA would have for Apex. And that's why we need to look at our industry from a, um, not a sales perspective, but a revenue perspective. Sales are an okay indicator, but they're not the full picture and they do not explain the incentives faced by companies. This game has, from what we know so far, been quite a success. They will likely push out the boat further with future releases. Now, this will become the Call of Duty model, but what about Overwatch 2? You know, or maybe if Overwatch gets a battle pass. We are going to see these companies push the boat more and more. Activision Blizzard, for an example, have a matchmaking patent for pairing players to optimize cosmetic item revenue. That is something that could be readily combined with their personalized daily purchase opportunity system from the Blackjack store in this game. And man, it's just such an ugly situation. It's one that will ruin the quality of games that it comes into contact with. And I really do believe that. You know, for me, earning different sites and customizing guns, that used to be something that was a part of the mastery reward loop of these games. Now, some of that is still there, but it's far less. And we are finding things that used to be in-game rewards for actually being good at the game are now being stripped out and thrust onto a store. I think it's very worrying for the quality of our games, and really it's something that I see this channel having a role in advocating against, and it's from two different tracks. Number one, it's the exploitation of people who are, let's just say, sort of weak to those purchases. Um, that's something that through user telemetry, companies can really target extremely well. They can target the people who are the most vulnerable to those sort of purchase decisions that maybe their greater self would not particularly want. And the other track is the erosion of game design caused by this. And I think that really with the two of those things, it's big problems for gaming. And that does make me sad indeed. Thankfully, indies exist, and I'm far more feeling good about supporting them than I am things like this. So there you go, that's today's video. Of course, there was two videos went up on the channel yesterday. There may be another one today, we'll have to see. And I did just get Elder Scrolls Blade access. Uh, I know it's a mobile game, but it's Elder Scrolls, and I guess I want to see how Bethesda have followed up Fallout 76. So hey, we'll see. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.